Hello there, I am Lermond and this is Worlds in Motion. A few months back we discovered what it would look like if the speed of light was slow. Thanks to the great feedback you guys gave on that video, I got inspired to try a few more experiments. But before that, I have a confession. That video is wrong. Or rather, it's incomplete. There are a number of things I missed that would help in understanding the resulting visuals. On top of this, the video received a lot of comments with misconceptions of the way light and special relativity works. For example, movies would lead you to believe that traveling through space at near light speed would look something like this. But unfortunately for us, the speed of light isn't very fast, not on an interstellar scale that is. However, the Doppler effect is still very much present, thanks to which you will see something like this as you sped up to a significant portion of C. What you are seeing here is actually the cosmic background radiation, or CMB for short, just as described in this paper. The only difference being that we added the searchlight effect too. If we look perpendicular to the direction of our travel, we can see that the stars take on the colors of the rainbow, as their light ahead of us shift towards ultraviolet and behind towards infrared. What if in that case, we tried going faster than light to achieve this effect? Well, unfortunately that's impossible. Why? Imagine the relation between space and time as a 2D graph where y is the amount we are moving through time and x the amount we are moving through space. Let's say that the speed of light is 1. Since this value is constant, we have the option of moving through either time, or space, or anything in between. We can move through space and time at the same time, but in order to move through space quicker, we need to sacrifice our movement through time. We can't travel faster than light, because we can't travel slower than light either. We are always traveling at light speed, which is a combination of moving through time and space as described by special relativity. The length of the arrow is fixed after all. Breaking this equation would mean breaking casualty, since people could perceive you having moved to a location before you actually got there. Ok, I hope that wasn't too difficult to understand, because we are only about to get to the most confusing part in my opinion. Our original experiments showed how the further something was, the more it lagged behind when we were moving around. Some of you asked us to why this would be the case, but to calculate it, you use something called the Lorentz transformation. It is what the code that I use calculates as well. Let me give you the simplest example I could think of. Imagine a 2D world with an observer standing still and a circle that moves past the observer at half the speed of light. As it does so, let's show the ray of light from it to the observer. By the time the ray arrives, the circle has already moved, but since the ray arrived from a different direction, that's where the circle appears to be, instead of where it actually is. Ok, but in the building animation, it is the observer moving, not the buildings. Why do the buildings bend in that case? The beautiful thing about relativity is that it doesn't matter who is doing the moving. If we send the observer at the same speed in the other direction and shoot the ray to the camera, we get the ray hitting the observer at an angle. But it does not seem that way. The ray's path seems to be in line with the circle, why should the circle appear elsewhere? It becomes obvious when we follow the observer and see the ray from the observer's point of reference. The ray, despite traveling perpendicular to the observer's path, seems to approach the observer at an angle the exact same angle we saw in the other example. Alright, now that we are all on the same page about that, there is one last thing we need to answer before moving on to more experiments. Would our universe even work if light speed was reduced? That depends on how much it was reduced of course, but if we are talking something like 10 meters per second, then the answer is a firm no. What do I mean by not work though? I could talk about how the light receptors in your eyes would have to be much, much more sensitive due to the loss of most of the electromagnetic spectrum, including visible light. I could go on about how the scattering of light in the atmosphere would drastically change, or how photosynthesis would essentially not work anymore, or how the sun's light would be drastically less powerful, thus the planet would go into an ice age, and so on. But it's all kind of pointless due to one fundamental issue. Gravity. Life would already be pretty much impossible even without factoring gravity in, but with gravity any light would be quickly lensed to the ground, making it impossible to see any distant light sources even when factoring in the bounces that light makes. Among these distant light sources is also the sun. The escape velocity of the sun would be greater than the speed of light, meaning that not a single photon could ever escape, if they could be generated in the first place, as quantum mechanics would also get completely messed up. This hypothetical universe would be pitch black. So I think you understand what I mean when I said that the original video is incomplete. Messing with something as foundational as the speed of light and changing it is like changing the size of a card in a house of cards. The house, that is the universe, collapses 
and understanding everything that results from it is way too complex to accurately predict. To experience the beauty that is special relativity, we need to set aside a lot of important effects it would have in reality. Ok, I have teased you enough, let's experiment a bit. Here is a room. Um, trust me it's there, it's just in complete darkness. On the ceiling however is a light that I have already turned on actually. The reason you cannot see it yet is because light is traveling only at 0.5 meters per second. Let us observe as the room lights up. That is quite beautiful if you ask me. Not that for us to see anything in the room, light needs to bounce off of it into the camera. The reason why everything lights up is because light can bounce in any random direction. This is called diffusion. Out of curiosity, here is what the same thing looks like if light only bounces in a specular fashion. Since everything acts as a mirror, we get one of those infinite mirror rooms kind of effect. With a smaller and simpler one, the effect is very clear. But what looks even more interesting is if we only turn on the light for a fraction of a second. The teapot remains lit for a long time as light bounces around the room. I limited the number of bounces to 10 since I want my computer to survive these experiments. The teapot in reality will remain lit for as long as the light had enough energy to be visible since each bounce results with some energy lost. Here is the room from earlier with a light bulb on the table at the center. The first thing to appear is the light bulb itself as the shortest path for the light is to go directly to the camera. The next visible surfaces were those that required minimal additional travel time, so light that bounced off of the table. Out of curiosity, I charted the travel distance of 300,000 of these photons. Note that this only contains those that eventually make it to the camera. We can see that some of them travel as much as 68 meters, but the majority only move around for less than 40. Here is the number of times they each bounce. Most of them bounce the maximum 10 times, but generally the more they bounce, the more they travel, which makes sense. We can squeeze a lot of interesting information out of this. For example, here you have the rays that didn't bounce, so the ones that come straight from the light bulb, which is about 3 meters away. Adding the ones that also bounced once, and we see that no light makes it under the table yet. In this case, the furthest they travel would be into the far corner of the room and into the camera from there. And now you also see the ones having bounced twice. Light managed to seep under the table now, which makes me wonder what kind of paths some of these photons take, especially ones that travel nearly 70 meters. So I decided to visualize them. I also had the idea to move the light around and see how that looks.
Alright, that one took a while to make so thanks for watching all the way through. The next time around, I will be playing around with sound as opposed to light. So look forward to that and I see you then.